Money is a controversial topic. People will think you're weird or selfish if you talk about it too often. It's cool to knock money or keep silent about it in today's world. Not here. Here, we prefer to talk about it so that we can all do better financially. The following 10 sentences about money may upset you. Good. After all, we only increase our net worth when we are influenced. Let's take a look at the first sentence. High salaries make you wealthy. This illusion is created by the words, get a degree and get a decent job. However, the most wealthy people are either investors or business owners. They are not wage slaves. It's harsh, but it's true. Sure, some CEOs are wealthy, but the majority of employees are not. And executive jobs are a huge pain since they force you to be away from your family and attend back-to-back -back useless meetings that give a lot of stress. This is now understood by younger generations. Because the entire value proposition of employment is shifting, finding a replacement job isn't really difficult anymore. Innovative sorts of work are gaining popularity. If you want to become wealthy, earn money with a side hustle, passive income, investing, and even an online business. Otherwise, you'll most likely be working for the rest of your life. Trust fund kids have a huge hidden disadvantage that people are unaware of. William Vanderbilt was one of the wealthiest trust fund children in history. He informed the New York Times just before his death in 1920 that his life could never be happy. He compared inherited wealth to being born without arms and legs as a handicap. He also said, It kills ambition in the same way that cocaine kills morals. One of his high school classmates was the son of an oil magnate. When they were younger, the rest of their friends all worked as delivery boys. The rich kids, on the other hand, sat at home in swimming pool rooms the size of a typical family home. They had everything, so they did nothing. Instead, they discovered marijuana and smoked it till their lungs turned black. The oil youngster then became 30 and looked like an old man who had lived a terrible life with no direction. You are not looking for free money. It is preferable to earn it because you will receive the bundled life lessons that will make you wealthy. You also gain a lot of energy from your ambition. It is critical to never give up on your ambitions or dreams. Poverty is more difficult in every sense than becoming wealthy. Some people believe that money is evil. They warn you that making money online is a fraud and that side hustles are just a culture of hustle that will lead to burnouts. As a result, their response is to do nothing and concentrate on self-care. Stay in your job and get paid less than you're worth. Be patient. Put up with your boss. Being behind on expenses as usual. Life is tough. And the economy did this to us. Yeah, and watch some Netflix to relax after a long day at work by watching some awful series about a fake life of a successful man or woman. Fuck it. Poverty is extremely difficult. It's easier to concentrate on being moderately wealthy and then using money to outsource the tasks you don't want to undertake. Likely, you might not make $1 million each year, and that's fine. But at the very least, try to make a living. This whole money can't buy happiness story is a joke. A lack of money prevents you from being happy because you cannot afford any of the life experiences you would like to experience before you die. Broke people ask how much it costs. Pricing alone is meaningless. You must ask yourself what it will give you in return. Return on investment is another term for it. The ROI determines the worth of goods and services. A course might set you back $300. That's a lot more than a $20 Amazon book. But, is it worth it if it teaches you something that earns you $100,000? Without a doubt. Quit being so concerned with cost. Begin obsessing over ROI. Your financial situation is entirely the result of your actions. Quit blaming others for your current financial situation. If you lost money, feel responsible for it. That does not rob you of ability. No, it restores your ability. When you realize you're entirely to blame, the obstacles vanish and it's just you and the world. Obsession with appearing wealthy stems from deep insecurity. When someone revs his Lamborghini engine on Hollywood Boulevard, he's really saying in a strange language, I'm insecure and badly need you to see me. When big businesses realized this, they created luxury brands and products instead of therapy to treat human insecurities. Quit trying to look wealthy. People are too busy with their own troubles to care about the Rolex you're wearing or the brand of your bag. It's stupid. Buy assets that make you money and buy assets again with the money you earned from those assets. That's the only way to build wealth. Your skills grow quicker than the S&P 500. 
there's been a lot of talk about investing in an index fund. We've also discussed it extensively on this channel. But keep in mind that these approaches outsource your wealth creation to third parties over which you have no control. Laziness will give a disappointing result. Therefore, it is critical to firstly invest in your skills. Acquire marketable skills and then demand high fees for them. You'll get from $100,000 to $1 million faster than you think. Meanwhile, index fund suckers will have to wait until they're old and gray before their investments bring them money they're too old to enjoy. The desire of unending wealth is a prison that leads to a mental health crisis. On the one hand, billionaires serve as excellent role models for everyone. They demonstrate what is possible. They launch rockets to Mars to broaden our horizons. Billionaires, on the other hand, are psychopaths. They're $100 bill hoarders. There is never enough money. They always need more to satisfy their ego and make them feel complete. They're so adept with money that they're woefully inadequate in every other aspect of life. Excessive wealth causes a mental health catastrophe. Too much money produces a mental prison that restricts your worldview and castrates reality. As a matter of fact, most millionaires got this far because they have ambition. They believe they have come to help the world with a purpose. Always strive for purpose instead of money alone. Instead of asking $3 questions, ask $30,000 questions. Ramit Sethi's mindset is highly crucial for your entire financial life. When you're upset about rising grocery bills, remind yourself of this. Indeed, keeping your expenses minimal and investing that money is always a smart idea, but it is not the best way to become wealthy. Concentrate on $30,000 questions such as, What new skill will I learn this month? How do I convince my jackass boss to pay me 20% more? How can I improve the return on my investments? Should I buy my house right now or when the interest rates are lower? What fresh side hustle can I start to increase my income? How can I reduce my debt faster so that I may pay less interest? These questions have a significant impact on your finances. Sure, spending $10 a day on lunch at work adds up to $2,600 per year, yet it does not have the same impact as a 2% mortgage instead of a 10% mortgage. It is critical to always ask yourself if the issue is $3 or $30,000. We all start out as financial amateurs. Finally, no one likes to hear that we all begin as financially illiterate. But first, let me tell you a little story. In 2008, a shy college lecturer attended the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting to question billionaires Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett. He was quite nervous. His palms were dripping wet. His face flushed. The question he asked, in a trembling voice that sounded like a fifth grader begging a stranger for milk money, was, how does a newly successful 30-year-old, non-investment professional, invest? Warren and Charlie responded. They provided some general guidance on index funds, which the young lecturer found useful. Timothy Ferris was that young lecturer. He is now regarded as a financial and business legend. Yet, he was a financial amateur back then. We all begin somewhere. Begin your financial education as soon as possible and make it a habit to invest in it every day.